Well, Razorback fans, Arkansas has themselves a new quarterback out of the transfer portal. But what's this mean for the rest of the quarterbacks? Well, let's talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 The Buzz. Dot com. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday as Arkansas continues to really hammer the portal and having some News coming out of that is not, I, I don't know. I'm trying to compare it to like last year. And I don't feel like it's as much last year as it, or as much this year as it was last year when it came to the amount of names that were getting thrown around. But still, uh, they're trying to work through it. And some players that have announced that they will be coming back, they're still working through all the scholarship situations. But without question, one of the biggest news of the portal for Arkansas so far is that they have gotten themselves a quarterback. And they have landed the transfer quarterback, Taylon Green. Now, for those you may not know, Taylon Green is a transfer out of Boise State. He entered into the portal, and he only took one visit to Arkansas. That's all it took. He was on an official visit this past weekend, and boom, it's done. He is officially coming to Arkansas. He is 6'6", 221 pounds, and he also had a few offers or at least some other considerations Elsewhere, like Cal, LSU, Baylor, Miami, Michigan State, as well as so many other places. So quite a quite a get for Arkansas at the quarterback position. And he even said, quote, this is according to Hogsports.com. Honestly, it's just the opportunity, the opportunity to be in the city. The teammates seem great. The team seems awesome. The coaches seem awesome. Everybody seems ready to work, and that's what I like. I call it getting out the mud just bringing that mindset every single day, whatever it takes to grind, whatever it takes to work hard at it. I really love it. I really love it for sure. So that is his mentality coming into this year. And also for those of you who may be looking up his stats and back in 2023, this past season, he kind of had a, a weird year to say the least. He only hit 57% of his passes for a little over 1,700 yards, 11 touchdowns, and nine picks, but he also rushed for 436 yards and nine touchdowns. So very much a dual threat quarterback. And he started the first five games, but then played the next five games as a backup, then started again, and it was all over the place. Uh, Boise State ha had some issues there in trying to figure out the quarterback situation. But uh, in the final three games, this is what I think people really are focusing on, is that he did end the season with completing 68% of his passes for 547 yards, five touchdowns, 141 yards on the ground, and three more touchdowns on the ground. He was the MVP of the Mountain West Championship game where he counted for four touchdowns, and ironically enough, Boise State beating UNLV 44-20. to Barry Odom coached UNLV team. So that's who they're getting in, and that's who they're bringing in. And the question now becomes, okay, this guy, how do we feel about him? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it, is it whatever? And here's the thing. I, people are going to get excited about it no matter what, because anytime there's something new, there's some newness about it. You convince yourself that it continues to just be good because, oh, well, you know, it's somebody different. It's someone new and it's someone we haven't seen before. So let's all get excited about it. Well, there might be some truth to that. There might be some truth to that. But I just need to continue to just say the hashtag of uh, trust Bobby. Hashtag trust Bobby, trust Petrino, however you want to say it, because they, it, I think that's where a lot of this comes into play. And from my understanding, at least what I've read about him and also uh, talking to a few people that have been following the recruitment of him and, and knowing it all, apparently this is the guy that they really, really wanted. Like Bobby Petrino, Sam Pittman, they brought him on a visit and this was their number one target out of the quarterback transfer portal. So that's kind of an interesting thing because you think about the amount of quarterbacks that are in the portal that are really high quality, high end guys. Uh, maybe they felt like it was just 
not even worth talking to the other guys because they wanted so much NIL or maybe they had no interest, whatever it may be. But it is at least a little bit reassuring to know that these coaches were all in on this guy. They went all in on them in recruiting and they were able to get him to Arkansas. So because of that, I feel pretty cool about it, uh, pretty good about it, because if that's what Bobby Petrino is wanting and Bobby Petrino got him, then that has to be the case. So now it becomes the big question of what will the quarterback room do now? Because as of right now, at the recording of this podcast, you still have KJ Jefferson on staff. You still have Jacoby Criswell. You still have Malachi Singleton. You also have uh, KJ Jackson coming in as quarterback as a true freshman. And now you add Taylor Green. That's five scholarship quarterbacks because Cade Fortin is going to be moving on. Now, that's not uncommon to think about having five quarterbacks. But what is uncommon is that you have at least three of them, I would say, that are planning to start. And that's KJ Jefferson, Jacoby Criswell, and now Taylor Green. Now, they need, now, they're all having the feeling, or at least the indication, that they're going to be starting for different reasons. K.J. Jefferson, I still think he's going to move on. I still think he's going to leave. But since he hasn't yet, we're just looking at it from that perspective. K.J. Jefferson, is he's been the starter. So he's not going to stay here and then revert back when he's been the starter and the leader of this team for so long. So he, if he did stay, he would expect to start. Jacoby Criswell also... Is one of those players to where he came in on the understanding of saying, hey, you're going to be behind K.J. Jefferson. But when K.J. Jefferson leaves to go pro, which was the presumption, then you will take over as our starting quarterback. Well, that didn't really go according to plan, did it? And now you have Taylor Green. who Taylor Green's not coming into Arkansas, transferring to Arkansas to be a backup. Just ain't happening. Not in the cards. So you got three guys that are all feeling like, or at least feel confident enough that they will be the starter for Arkansas next year, assuming that they'd want to stay. And that doesn't even include Malachi Singleton, who was a true freshman last year. Haven't seen anything of him. Then again, KJ Jackson coming in, which I don't think KJ Jackson's expecting to start right away or else he wouldn't be coming to Arkansas. But, you know, for Malachi Singleton, what does that look like when you got two quarterbacks in front of you? You know, it, it's a different question because you also got to take this in consideration because people have been bringing up uh, uh, Criswell and saying that, you know, you know, not counting him out. And we'll talk a little bit more about that and the underlining meaning of that. But I think it's a lot of it, too, where you have people looking at it in a perspective of just, you know, next man up. And that's how it works. Well, you got to remember. Last year, Dane Enos is the guy that really brought in Criswell. Like Criswell, I think, was coming in no matter what. Uh, but he was coming in, and that was kind of an Enos guy where he accepted. He's like, yeah, this is who we'll have. This is who we'll coach, and we're fine with it. We're fine with KJ. And KJ was a Bryles guy. So it's almost like you're having three different quarterbacks currently on the roster that were brought in by three different coordinators and coached by three different coordinators and quarterback coaches at given times. And all three of them are wanting to be the starter under the new coach. Well, it comes down to this, folks. Who is the coordinator right now? That's Bobby Petrino. Who's the quarterback coach right now? That's Bobby Petrino. Who did Bobby Petrino go and get? He got Taylor Green. That is not to say it's any slight against any other quarterback on the roster or anything, but just basing it off of some logic and some common sense, I'd be hard-pressed to think that the starter for next year's team will not be Taylor Green doesn't mean he won't have competition. Doesn't mean they don't want competition. But if Bobby Petrino has been eyeing this guy for a while and this is who he wanted and they went and got him and he's here. I don't think Bobby Petrino is going to say, all right, well, we got you. We went all in on you. But now uh, we're just going to have to see how you do. And we'll have some three or four other quarterbacks that will probably be all be in the same mix. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. He brought him in for a reason. He's a six foot six dude that seems to really fit the profile of what Petrino would like to have as a quarterback, which we'll also talk about later in the podcast. But it feels like Taylor Green's going to be the guy. So that's okay. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. And again, it's trust Petrino. I trust Petrino in this. 
And I don't, in the numbers and everything of Boise State, you know, you, you can look at it in a negative way or in a positive way. You can say he's good. You can say he's bad, whatever it is. But I just believe that in so many times you got to look at it from the perspective of who's looking at him, who's been offering him, who's been talking with him. Well, seeing some of those teams and those, some of those names and some of the ones that were really interested in him, they were obviously interested in him for a reason. So I think there's a possibility that it could be really good for Arkansas. But uh, Taylor Green, as of right now, if I'm betting my money on it, I'm going to say that he's the starting quarterback for Arkansas next football season. Just going out on a limb. Uh, we'll talk more about uh, something about recruiting between in-state and out-of-state. I think it's a fascinating thing here in just a second. But first, when you're, you're hiring for your small business, you want to have as many top-tier candidates as possible to interview. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn is just not another job board. It's a vast network with more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. Hiring is easy when you have that many qualified candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time and resources to be able to make the hire. But thankfully, with LinkedIn, the process is intuitive, quick, and easy. They even launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions. Maybe the process is even easier and quicker. Absolutely. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, um, I was thinking about this for a while, and I think that the Jacoby Criswell, uh, Taylor Green dynamic, interesting thing really made me start to consider some things as far as players who are from the state of Arkansas and from out of the state of Arkansas. Because when I was talking about this on my radio show, uh, some people, when I thought that Taylor Green was going to be the guy and saying, oh, yeah, I'm probably going to lean with him. People were saying, always doubting the in-state kid, always counting out the in-state kid. And I was like, well, hold on a second. It's not about counting out an in-state kid or doubting an in-state kid. It's about having the best player available and to play that best player. There's no doubt that there's been storylines and historic moments and really feel-good moments and stories about in-state kids going to Arkansas, playing for their state school, and having a whole lot of success. We know about Darren McFadden. Uh, we know about Corliss Williamson. You know, names like that that really resonate where they're in-state, all Razorback, all the time, and had great success and continue to this day to love their state uh, and to really appreciate their state. And that's awesome. Those people should be always, always praised for that and appreciated for that and respected for that. But there's a big part, I think, sometimes people feel like, okay, well, if you're in state, that means a little bit more than out-of-state kids. You know, if it's, if it's between two kids that are playing the same position. One's from the state of Arkansas, one's not. And they're close in talent level and skills or whatever it is. And they're close. You should go with the in-state kid no matter what. Or even, in some cases, in some people's minds, if the out-of-state kid is just slightly better, slightly better, still go with the in-state kid. Because we all love that story, right? We love the story of the in-state success that we can talk about and have fun with and relate to because they're Arkansas. And I, don't, I take a different approach because it's the same way that it is when it comes to coaches as it is players. I appreciate players and coaches in their own right and in their own ways for being Razorbacks because that's where they choose to go. No one forces them to go to Arkansas. No one makes them go to Arkansas. They choose to be a Razorback, and what they do in their time as a Razorback is up to them. And even if it's not as great as it want, as it should be, or maybe they don't have the greatest career or on the greatest team or whatever, I will always have a massive respect for Razorback players and coaches that are Razorbacks, that do the right things, that give it their all, and go all in for Arkansas. I'm all for it. 
So that's number one. But number two, when it comes to in-state versus out-of-state, folks, I don't look at it that way. You know, I don't look at it as, well, if you're from the, if you're from the state, it means more. It doesn't mean more. It just means something different. Because at the end of the day, you're still a Razorback no matter what. And I would even make the argument that bringing in people out of the state of Arkansas is, and that end up being great players and having a lot of success is even more difficult than getting the in-state kids who grew up being all around Razorback fans their entire life. You know, when you're able to go outside of the state and get a big time player, that almost resonates more so. But I don't really care about where a player is from. Because again, once you choose to be a Razorback, that's what it is. Like that, that's who you are. You're a Razorback. And you know, if Arkansas has this quarterback in Taylor Green, for instance, if he comes in and he blows it up and just dominates and he's awesome and he is just going out there and he's throwing for 3,000 yards, he rushes for over 1,000 yards, Arkansas's offense is elite and they end up going nine and three, you know, just something like that. If he does that, that's always going to be what I care about and appreciate. But I'm not going to look back and be like, that was great, but the in-state kid, Jacoby Criswell, should have gotten that opportunity just because he's in-state. No. And I would say the same thing on the opposite side. If Criswell's the best man for the job, and I trust Petrino to give the job to the right person, and he goes out and has that big level of success, then so be it. That's awesome. Great. I want the best kid, the best player to always play regardless of where they're from or who they are or what background they have. Always be the best because as when I mentioned some of those players that came from Arkansas and that were so high level and so elite and once in a generation type player, you also got to think about how many players came through Arkansas that were great, phenomenal players that weren't from here. You know, you think about Felix Jones. You know, you think about a guy like Ryan Mallett, which I know technically he was a Razorback fan, but still wasn't from in the state. You think about a guy like a Nile Davis and, and how good he was. You think about uh, a Steve Atwater. You know, you think about a Jason Peters. So many players that are out there that have had success and been great for Arkansas, even though they weren't necessarily from Arkansas. You know, Rocket Sanders, say what you want about him. He wasn't from here. Alex Collins, rest in peace. He wasn't from here. Jonathan Williams wasn't from here. So just always remember that and take that into consideration where it doesn't matter if you're an in-state kid or you're an out-of-state kid. It doesn't matter if you, you know, grew up a Razor, grew up a Razorback fan or you didn't grow up a Razorback fan. Like none of that matters. What matters is you're a Razorback. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. And as long as you're a Razorback and as long as you're competing and as long as you're doing your best and as long as you're giving value and you're having a great season or great year or whatever, that's the only thing that matters to me. And that's the only thing that should matter to any of us. May the best player win. May the best player be in. And let's have the most success and the most fun with it. Folks, as the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on, hot on FanDuel. So right now, new customers get a $150 in bonus bets. With any winning $5 money line bet, that's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in the action than right now. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, I was thinking about this, too. When we're talking about quarterbacks and coming into Arkansas and how it was looking at the just the past 30 years, we'll say. We'll say the SEC era of quarterbacks that have come through Arkansas. To me, the best quarterbacks in Razorback history have really been and in this era, I know that people will bring up some of the older quarterbacks and, and that's not a slight against them or anything. But when you think about ones that had the high level success and ones that you remember and uh, the numbers and the plays and everything, you think about Ryan Mallett, you think about Matt Jones, you think about Tyler Wilson, you think about Brandon Allen, you think about uh, KJ Jefferson even and uh, some of the records that he holds, uh, you know, you, even even Clint Sterner at times. So there's just been a lot of really good quarterback play in the past 30 some odd years. Or the Razorbacks. 
And so the question becomes is if you're going to be successful as a quarterback at Arkansas, what does that need to look like? You know, what does that need to be like? What is that? Uh, is there a prototypical type of Razorback quarterback that fits and what, what does it need to be? Does it need to be dual threat? Does it need to be pocket passing? Does it need to be tall? Does it need to be fast? Like what, what needs to be the ultimate player or the ultimate quarterback for Arkansas? Hmm. And I thought about this a lot and I came to the conclusion that I'm like, you know what? It's been proven time and time again that you can win in different ways. Like Arkansas at quarterback has won in different ways. Because if you think about just some of the great quarterbacks I named off, Matt Jones is different from all the other quarterbacks. KJ Jefferson is different from all the other quarterbacks. Ryan Mallett was different from all the other quarterbacks. I even think that Tyler Wilson and Brandon Allen were very different. And, you know, sometimes there's just slight differences. And I'm not just talking about the way they throw the ball or whatever. But, you know, you think about Tyler and, you know, the years he had. <clears throat> one thing I always remember about Tyler is just his toughness. His toughness and, and durability. And, you know, him always playing the game that he, he wanted to play. You know, you think about uh, Brandon Allen. I think Brandon Allen was un, underrated as a runner. Like, he was actually had a lot of athleticism and a lot of speed behind him. People forget about that, but he was able to make plays with his feet at times and extend plays. And then you think, of course, KJ, big, able-bodied, run-you-over type of quarterback that was hard to get down. Matt Jones outrunning everybody. Ryan Mallett, uh, you know, couldn't run very fast, didn't have lateral movement, but man, the arm, could you could do anything. It could be devastating. So the point is, is like you can have different types of quarterbacks, different levels of quarterbacks, different styles and everything. It's just a matter of, can you get it to fit as a whole? Can you get it to fit what the coaching staff is trying to accomplish and the offensive coordinator is trying to do and run offensively? Can you get it to fit that while also surrounding said quarterback with enough talent to be able to put him in a position to be successful? Like First and foremost, having an offensive line in front of him that can block for him and do a really good job of it. Having wide receivers throw to, having a running game to be able to offset it a little bit. It's all a matter about the talent you put around it. Because, as I've said many times before, Ryan Mallett is the greatest quarterback to ever play at Arkansas. But I think even Ryan would admit and say that if he wouldn't have been the quarterback he was, if it wasn't not only for the genius of the offensive mind of Bobby Petrino, but having elite wide receivers to throw to and tight ends and having an offensive line that would protect him. like Those things matter. So is there a type of quarterback that Arkansas needs to have or should have? Maybe in your mind, you know, maybe you'd love to have a quarterback that you see somewhere else at some other school and say, man, I'd love to have a quarterback like that. Maybe you do. But to me, it's just a matter of fit. Pieces coming together and it fitting. Would it be great for a quarterback that Arkansas to throw for 3,500 yards and 30 touchdowns? Sure it would. But if they had success and they won 10 games, say, do I want to see that, or would I rather see a quarterback uh, throw for 2,500 yards and rush for 1,000 yards than have 30 total touchdowns, but then still go 10 wins? I don't care. The winning is what I care about. The success of that offense is what I care about. Whether it's on the ground, whether it's through the air, whether it's a dual-threat quarterback or a quarterback going back and just nailing his targets, does not matter. What matters is what, how they succeed in that offense – how they fit in that offense, and how they win. That's the only thing that matters. Appreciate everybody listening in to Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter, Buzz John Neighbors, for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.